Now we stopped, we started lo formulating location models, right? And last week we have formulated the set covering problem. If you are not, like remember this matrix, we were actually trying to find where to open the facilities so that there is a facility next or close enough to every district that we're trying to cover. And coverage distance was a given to us, a parameter being nine minutes, 10 minutes, whatever. Now of these, there are three um, basic location models. So what we did was cover models. We locate based on the fact that we want everybody to be covered within a certain threshold distance, okay? Now today I'll walk you guys through the other versions of the location models. <coughs> and our first example is the median problem. Let's read the problem statement first. You will understand why it's not exactly the same with the one that we did on Thursday last week. So now we're again in Ankara municipality, okay? But this time, we're not locating fire stations or hospitals because for them, some was not making any sense. But this time, we're going to locate post offices. Okay. And for the post office and the districts, again, well, today, in today, post offices may not be that much of an example, but say snail mail is still valid, and then every district will go to the post office and come back. So back and forth trip between each district and the post office that we're locating, all right? Uh, it says formulate a model, formulate a model which will minimize the total trip time. So before doing anything else, how about you tell me the performance measure? What is the performance measure? What is the performance measure? Come on, come to class. Trip time. It says minimize total trip time. So I'm supposed to minimize the total trip time, right? So that is my performance measure. Okay, define me the variables. What? is an appropriate decision variable in here. Yes? Binary. Binary. And what is your variable? OK. All right, so you have an xi. 1, 0. If we open a post office, at i and zero otherwise. Do we need another variable or do you think this is enough? Huh. Can you write the objective function with this decision variable or do you need anything else? Sorry for the technological delay, but now my, my pen is working. Do you need another variable or is the variable just defined as enough? Yes. Okay, travel time, you say. Yes. Is travel time a decision variable or a parameter? Um, parameter. Do I know a cost? And if I know it, is it going to be a variable or a parameter? Parameter. So, yes? It's already given, back and forth. Yes? So you need a variable to, to tell you which region is assigned to which district, which post office, right? Would you be able to tell me the model, uh, the variable? If district J is assigned to post office at I. Okay, I don't have enough space there, but I'm trying to say to post office at I. Okay, now tell me the objective function. 
Tell me the objective function. Let me start. Minimize what? It says total trip time, yo. So tell me the total trip time. Are you multiplying two binary variables? Yes. Why? Why are you multiplying with xi there? Now, I know what you have in your mind. We're going to do it with the constraints. Okay? I didn't tell you the name of the parameter. But let's say tij is the time to go from i to j. Okay? Now tell me the objective function. How about it's a back and forth, so tij plus tji times x ij, right? If i, I oh, it's a yij, it's a yij. It's a yij. If i is served by j, it takes the value of 1. And if yij is 1, this is the cost or trip time, the one in the objective function, right? <clears throat> now, what kind of constraints do we need? Because it has two post offices. Very good. Xi is bounded by 2. It says, built well, e or equal to 2, but equality will be handled with the objective anyway. Or, OK, what else? If I solve this, my objective function value is 0. Yes? There is nothing forcing me to assign y, certain y values to 1. So my objective will be, I give this to solver, optimum solution is zero. How can we do that? Eliminate that. Any ideas? Yes? Why I did smaller and equal than x That is also true. What he have just written is actually what you tried with the multiplication. Because in the objective function, you wanted to multiply it with xi so that if there is no post office, you don't want to count it. But with such a constraint, if xi is 0, so this is like setup cost, yeah? If xi is 0, all the related y's, but this is x, I define it district j. So if xi, yeah, 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 it's still the same thing. If xi is 0, I cannot make any assignment to that district, right? And this is handled by the second constraint that we have just written. Still, I give this to solver. Optimum solution is 0. All y's can be 0, yes? Let's put it here. What did you say? Y i j greater than or equal to cardinality of my set n. Does this make any sense? What, y i j is a binary variable. My number of districts is 5, 6, whatever. So this is not a correct statement, right? Try again. Suggestions. How can we? So did you get the problem? I formulate it. OK, I'm opening at most two facilities. I'm not making any assignments. If there is no facility there, <coughs> I give this to solver. Optimum solution is 0. You have to eliminate that possibility. Yes? You're summing over what? J is my district. If you write this, the third constraint I've just written makes sure that every district 
is assigned to a facility. Yeah? Every district gets a facility assignment. Clear? Clear? I'm going to play with this. There is something that you need to... By the way, my space is far done, but xi and yij in 0, 1, right? I need the binaries. <coughs> there is a tiny little correction that I need to make. Well, if you define yijs, then what is yjj? What do you think YJJ means? One. When? One. When it is one, always? Yes. Then it's opening a facility everywhere? Is it always one? Uh, yes? One when you open up the facility. Which is? We have another variable for that. What was it? It's there. It is x, well, with this index, it is xj, yeah? So if we define it like this, if we have an xj, then our yij def definition should say i not equal to j, because I have another variable for that. Or you define y for everybody. In that case, if your i is not equal to j, how do you fix this constraint, the last one? So for the district, so the summation is i not equal to j. How about the districts which already has a post office in it? How about this? There's either a post office at that district. So if, if xj is 1, you don't make an assignment. There's a post office in itself, right? If xj is 0, then that j should be assigned to some i which has a post office in it, which is handled by the second constraint. Okay? So, if yij is defined with i not equal to, it's totally up to you. All right? You may choose to define x variable and define xj, then in our formulation in here, this is the correct formulation for that. So you choose to define x variable separately, which says there is a post office, and your allocation variable is then, your assignment variable y, is only true when there is no post office there. So your y variable is defined for i not equal to j. On the other hand, if we define yij for all ij, then yjj represents the post offices, yeah? Then yjj represents the post offices. How, we, how shall we... Uh, Update the formulation, so you minimize, again, i and j, everything, subject to, oh, my pen is running out. You write this, and you say y i j equal to one for all i j, and you say, yij less than or equal to yjj. Yeah? If you choose not to define that x variable, nothing changes, all right? In terms of number of binary variables and everything, these two models are equal to each other. Of course, you have to say yij binary. Okay? It's exactly the same thing. You just need to... Once you're 
in the solver, in Excel, Express, whatever, you have to tell the solver where those <coughs> indices are coming from. So if you define both of the indices, if you define the YJJ, then you don't need XJ. Or you don't define YJJ, and you use XJ, yeah. For what? What, how can you, how would you like to change it? What kind of an inequality do you want? Like why I say it's less All right, is that gonna work, class? I'm sorry, why I say it's bigger. Okay, yeah. You can do that. You can do that, but the optimum solution will end up being one. Clear? Clear? Okay, how about we do this? We're still post office. We're still locating a post office or two post offices. But there's another restriction. A post office cannot serve more than four customers, including itself. How would you write this? How would you update the models so that you put this additional restriction in the picture? Yes? In the summation of this, why I think cannot be more than four. Why? Why IJ? In the summation of this, not this J. Mm, under J, okay. Smaller than or equal to four. How about itself? Oh, plus. In this case, I equals to J is allowed. Or, right? If you define x variable, this is your constraint. If you do not have your x variable, but your yjj represents your uh, facility, then you write it like this. Clear? Clear? Any questions? Now I'm moving to another location problem, a very well studied, but a different version. Okay. Yes? It's or. So for this formulation, for part B, median, we are actually defining two different formulations, okay? In one, we define yij when i not equal to j, and we have an xj, which says there is a post office there. They are serving themselves, of course. In the other, we define yij, and yjj means there is a post office there, because j is being served by j, all right? Okay, so the one on top, yij less than or equal to four, in the summation, I don't make a distinction, I being equal to J or not. So YJJ is included there, because I'm summing over all, this is for all I, by the way, and this is for all I. I'm summing over all J's, which also include YJJ, yeah? In the second one, I not equal to J. It says including itself. I have to count that it's also serving itself, so I like it like this. Clear? Juk? Yes? Uh, it is for all I. How did I define I? District J is assigned to I. The first index, it's like this, XI. Uh-huh. Because the first index was referring to my post office. Clear? Question? How about this? This is back to A, fire station location. Let me bring in. Fire stations, right? We did this. We minimized total number of fire stations so that everybody is within a certain travel time. Yeah, you have it in your note, the solution. But now, we're again locating fire stations, but this time we don't know. There is no 10 minutes. Was it 10 minutes in here? 
15. In part A, the municipality told us that open minimum number of facilities, fire stations, so that all of my regions, districts, is within 15 minutes travel time. So our performance measure there was number of fire stations, and in the requirements, we made sure that there is a fire station within 15 minutes travel time for each of my districts. That was covered. Now, very similar, all right? Again, I'm locating fire stations, but this time, the municipality doesn't tell me the 15 minutes. Instead, it says, you know what? I, on, I can only do two fire stations. I have a budget. You solve your cover, you ended up with five, sorry. Right? I can't do it. So this is looking at the same problem from a different perspective. In the cover version, we wanted to make sure that everybody is within 15 minutes travel time. Fine, we got it. Whatever the number of facilities is, we find it. Now in this version, the, the, the municipality says open two. I only have budget for two. So this time I know the, the number of fire stations. This time this is my environment, right? But he says, find the locations of those two so that the farthest region is kept at minimum. Let's try to rephrase the performance measure here. What do you think the performance measure here is? What are we trying to optimize this time? I know it's going to be two. Time, what? Time of what? Fire this region. So OK, I open two. I have my regions everywhere, yeah? This two will correspond to a certain time, depending on whoever the worst guy is. Then I open another two. Now this one will correspond to another worst guy, right? So the worst depends on where you locate your fire stations, right? So the performance measure is the travel time to the worst customer, whoever it is. I'm not summing, yeah? What am I doing? It's a different thing that's going on. I somehow, I somehow need to find a way to represent my <coughs> farthest region. Yes? Yes. Yeah, exactly. How about you tell me the decision variables then? All right. Let's see if this is going to work. It's not. I don't know why this is happening. Huh. If we open a f fire station at I, right? And zero otherwise. And is this enough? You have to know how many minutes your farthest guy is traveling to. In the cover, this was enough because you don't care how many minutes each one is doing, as long as it's less than 15. But this time, I want to minimize that, right? So I have to know how many minutes each customer is actually traveling to the uh, fire station that he's assigned to. Did you get it? Did you get the major difference between cover and center? In the cover, the actual travel distance has nothing to do as long as it's less than 15 or threshold. This time, I'm trying to minimize that. So I have to know what's happening. I have to know how many minutes each region is actually traveling. So I need my yij, yik, one zero. If region, shall I use the same thing with i, if region k, is served by facility at I. Yeah? This time I have to know what's happening. Are you with me? If so, how about we formulate? 
Let's leave the objective function. Apparently, we're minimizing something. We're minimizing something, but let's leave it for a while and write the other constraints. Or let me say, I'm going to minimize z. Now you tell me what z is. Yes? So how do you write it in mathematics? Z. <laughs> uh -huh. How do you write it in math? Z. We did this. Meet chocolate. How was it doing? So how did we do it? Greater than or equal to what? He says YIK. Doesn't matter. It's just index. Y11, Y12, Y13. I defined it as YIK, so it's Y. And you're writing distance by using the same variable with a different index? Thank you for doing this. OK, be very, very careful. We're very, um, well, this is an important topic. <sighs> Hold on. OK. Oh, I'm opening a parenthesis. Let's say I is taking values from 1, 2, 3. Your j and k are taking values from 4, 5, 6, and 7. All right? When I say yij or yik, doesn't matter as long as they're from the same. I could have written y bahar oh yeah. It's just an index there, right? What am I going to do? I'm going to write y14, y15, y16, then y24, right? It's just my naming of it. All right? Thank you for doing this. I, we, we really want to do this. So be very careful. It doesn't matter how you name it, as long as you are consistent with the first index denoting what and the second index denoting what, and you're defining your sets Oops. that they're coming from. OK? Now let's go back. Now tell me how to fix this constraint. Yes? Exactly, that's what you're supposed to do. So if yik is 1, that means my region k is served by facility at i. So I'm taking the distance, whatever that distance is, tik. I'm trying to find the worst of those, and I want to minimize that, right? Do I need anything else? If not, the optimum solution is 0 again. Fix this. How do we fix this? Yes? <laughs> yes, that's true. OK. You like immediate constraints, which is true. He says, I have to open two facilities. That's what it says. What else? He still didn't fix the y's being 0 situation. You have to eliminate that. How do we do this? <coughs> In this current version, it's going to open two facilities and then make all assignments to zero. Fix it. Yes? Summation is over what? No, that's what I'm trying to say. We define the variable if region k is served by a facility at i. So the first index tells me where the facility is. So I have to sum over the first index, and I have to write this for all k, right? Is it finished? Is it finished? How about if there is no post office, don't make an assignment? Because here, my x and y variables are two separate things. There is nothing related with them to each other. Remember, 
the practice session, we keep on saying the same thing. You have to relate your variables. Now, if this y is in your mind assignment, and this x is in your mind the post office. So you have to tell the mathematical model that if there is no post office, don't make an assignment. You have to relate your x and y variables. How do we do that? Quick fix, yes? Exactly. As soon as my pen starts working, I'm going to write it. I, uh... Bunun pili bitiyor galiba. Okay, y i k less than or equal to x i. This is making sure that if there is no facility, if there is no post office, don't make an assignment. We also have to tell the model the domain constraints. And now we're done. Okay. Sure. If we took the region from two post offices are equal, the summation of the AIK can be It will just make one assignment. If it has two the same distant facilities, this is going to pick one arbitrarily. You could have written greater than or equal to two. Again, it won't make any difference in the objective function. The question was, if there are more than one options for the same facility with the same cost, then this is actually forcing it to be assigned to one only. Well, it takes one arbitrarily. In terms of optimum solution, nothing is going to change. All right? OK. Final location thing. Then we're going to start something else in the next hour. This is a fancy thing, though, but I need my board. Oh, here it is. OK. Let's remember. It's, we're going back to part B, median, post office. Okay, it was telling me how many post offices I'm going to open, and I was trying to minimize the total distance traveled, right? We also even add the constraint that each post office can serve at most four. All right, the same problem, we're putting one more challenge in it. What does it say? Now, okay, for the post offices, my regions will come and go, my normal districts without post offices. And there's another thing. The post offices that I'm opening, they will have, <coughs> there will be a trip between the two post offices. OK? Again, want to minimize the total trip time. So let's do the one with, um, x and i, so I still have an xi and a yij, yeah? xi was telling me if there is a post office there or not, and yij i not equal to j was telling me if district j was going to the post office at i or not, right? Uh, our basic formulation was minimize, let's remember, over i and j, <laughs> tij, Some of i and j, sorry for the pen, I don't know what's happening. Okay, once that it's working, let me write it immediately. X, i, j. And then we have said that summation x, k equals to 2, y, k. Then we said that x, i, j, i not equal to j, plus x, i should be equal to 1. And we also said these are yij's less than or equal to 
Xi. Yeah, this was the formulation we did a couple of minutes ago. So I just have written something else, so I'll try to correct it, but... Ah. All right? Yes. This was it. But this does not count the fact that two post offices are actually going back and forth. Now, for the start, let's write it nonlinear, and then I'll teach you how to fix it. All right? So, with this new restriction, I have to have plus sum over 2 i and j, t i j, only if both x i and x j, this is a t, are variables, are of 1. So, what I'm trying to do is... I have included in the objective function, I've converted the objective function to this. I have the tij plus tji, yij, plus over i and j, tij, and I'm having this cost only if both xi and xj is 1. Yeah? When one of them is zero, that means there is no connection between those two. So I just want going to have this cost only if both are one. Right? OK. Now, but this is nonlinear. How do we fix this? Let's see how do we fix it. I'll give you a general way to fix two binary variables, and then we will go back and make the assignment to the, uh, make the correction to the formulation. Okay, here's what I'm gonna do. Okay, let z equals x times y, when both binary, yeah? For x, y, and z in 0, 1, okay? So first of all, we define a new variable which will tell us the multiplication of those variables. Now, I cannot write this as their multiplication because it's gonna be nonlinear. So I propose these equalities. I'm gonna say z is less than or equal to x plus y over two, and z greater than or equal to x plus y minus one. And I'm claiming that this z will be 1 when only both are 1. If one of them is 0, my z will be 0. Okay? So my claim is equivalent to z equals x times y. Now I'm going to prove my claim. So this is my x. This is my y. All right? And this is my z. This is my x plus y over 2, z less than or equal to, yeah, it says. And my last constraint was x plus y minus 1. Now, if this is 1 and this is 1, I want this to be 1. If this is 1, this is 0, this is 0, this is 1, this is 0. So there are four cases that can happen, yeah? I have to show that the other cases are 0, and I'm only 1 when both are 1. Let's see what these constraints are telling me. The first one says z less than or equal to 1 and z greater than or equal to 1. So this is a check. My two constraints helping me to force z equals to 1, right? In the second situation, x is 1, y is 0. The first constraint says z less than or equal to 0.5. And the second constraint says z greater than or equal to 0. Now z being a binary variable, less than or equal to 0.5, forces z to be 0 because it's a binary variable. The second one, the same thing. The first one says z less than or equal to 0.5. The second one says z greater or equal to 0, forces my z 
So zero again. The last th case, when both are zero, z less than or equal to zero, z greater than or equal to minus one, again, z equals to zero. So I just proved my claim. Four cases that can, there are four cases that can happen, and in all those four cases, those two inequalities are actually forcing my z to the intendant value. I want my z to be one, zero, zero, zero. If one of them is zero, the first constraint, x plus y over two is active, because it's saying that z less than or equal to 0.5. Z can only be less than or equal to 0.5 by being zero, because that is a binary variable. So it works. The first constraint, <coughs> when they're both one, the first constraint is not active. It just says z less than or equal to one. But the second one says one plus one minus one, z is greater than or equal to one. So this constraint, whoopsie, is working when both are one. And the other case is the, second, the first constraint is working. And we did it. Let's go and fix our model, then this is what's gonna happen. How about I try to do it in here, okay? So we're gonna have minimize sum over i and j, tij plus tji zij, no, that was a yij, sorry. Tij plus Tji times Yij plus, again, over I and J, Tij times Zij. I define another binary variable, so I have X, Y, and Z, all right? My constraints, I have the standard constraints, like less than or equal to two, equal to one, less, Y less than or equal to X, and I also say, Zij greater than or equal to xi plus xj minus one and Zij less than or equal to xi plus xj over two. And my domain constraints should include everybody. Got it? Yes. Xj if there is a facility there or not. Okay? Is it clear? Because this, this is a trick that we use a lot, this, this, this slide in here, because there will be cases where you need to multiply those two variables with each other. If you have to multiply two binaries, this is how to get rid of those. You define another binary, to represent the multiplication, then you write appropriate constraints so that the mathematical model will choose the correct value for the multiplied version, even though you don't put the multiplied version in the model itself. Clear? Any questions? Questions? Sure. We're not multiplying. No, this is general. This, this form here is for general. If you have to, to multiply two binary variables, x and y, a and b, then you need to define another variable. You have to define another variable to represent their multiplication and then write these two constraints in the model, okay? Then we did it appropriately for this case. We define Zij to represent Xi times Xj, all right? Clear? Clear? My last slide on integer programming is just include some remarks, all right? The, the first remark is the thing I keep telling, yeah? There is no one way of doing it. There are many different ways of formulating the same problem, so you gotta be careful in it. Um, solvers 
Now, how to solve integer programs is next year's topic in 303, but you're gonna appreciate the fact that it's not easy, right? Uh, also, they're not easy to model, and they're not easy to solve, integer programs. But they're more realistic, so we gotta learn how to deal with them, and that's what we have done. In terms of modeling, then, this class finishes, we try to put every challenge that can happen, and with homeworks and two more practice sessions, again, on modeling, you guys will be done, All right? Let's give a 10 minutes break. In the next hour, we're gonna start with our good old graphical solution. <laughs>